Welcome up on this edition of the Open Alliance Show. 1787, the Flying Circuits is back on to showcase their current progress and what they've been doing. They got some really cool things, including these awesome bumper guards that, well, I haven't seen before, but apparently quite a few OE teams are now attempting it, but really, really cool stuff on this. We'll also get a superstructure overview of their robot as well, too. And also we'll get bit, go a bit more through on their CAD and what their current progress is for that, what's going to be on their main comp robot as well, too. And we're going to be wrapping up with a programming uh, simulation, what they're doing for that, showcasing how that simulation works. So let's dive right into the flying circuits coming up here on the Open Alliance Show. The FRC Premiere Night is back for Crescendo on Saturday, February 24th. Submit up to a two-minute video showcasing your robot in celebration of this build season. Submissions are due by Thursday, February 22nd. Submit your reveal video and get submission requirements at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere24. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Let's welcome back on 1787, the Flying Circuits coming in out of Ohio. Lots of cool stuff to cover. Uh, we got a robot we're going to be showing off and then hopping in the on shape, talking programming. Can't wait to dive right in. Uh, so I know we got three students and then one joining us later, but three of you on screen, if you don't mind, welcome back and uh, reintroduce yourselves from last time uh, that we had you on. Sure, I'm Charlie. I'm uh, the president and head driver of Team 1787. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm the vice president and lead programmer of the team. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm one of the lead designers for the robot. And speaking about robot, and, uh, let's let's go over and check out your current progress on that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll rotate we're the camera. Over here. This is very high end Hi. stuff here. Uh, <laughs> Hi, my name is Anjali Chipiala. Um, I'm the treasurer and uh, lead designer in uh, for the robot. Um, so I wanted to start kind of like from the bottom and then work my way up. So um, I'm not sure you can see, but um, we do have some car. Uh, polycarbonate um, sorry, yeah. like uh, plates here. So what this will do is deflect the notes so that we won't have to like run in on them. And um, we also have a raised bumper in front of our intake so that um, you know um, we'll be picking up notes from here and we won't have anything um, on the outside of our frame perimeter. Um, so moving up, um, you can see that we have um, our new Krakens installed and uh, in place. So we're like estimating that we're gonna be going around uh, 20 feet per second. Um, so right now, what we got done uh, with this week is we fully assembled our intake. Um, so as you remember, we had the snake intake. So we're able to intake and um, kind of get it into the accelerator from about like here to here. So about like 90 degrees and um, you know, within this area, we're going to be shooting and we're going to be able to move under the barrier at this height. So one of our goals was to actually get underneath the stage um, while being able to intake and, you know, um, basically get our center of mass really low. Um, so, you know, um, at this height, we're able to go underneath the stage and get everywhere really quickly. Um, as we move this up, um, this is the basically right here, this is how we're gonna score into the amp. And um, the reason why we made this rotate all the way here is so that when we go underneath the stage to climb up, we are able to kind of hook the, the chain and um, kind of grab onto it. So this is one of the sides of our uh, climbing mechanism. Um, we don't have the other one installed yet, but what this is going to allow us to do is basically pull, sorry, I'm not sure if this works, but sorry, we're going to be able to pull up on the chain and bring yourself up. And we're going to be able to kind of use this again and uh, score through the trap. So, um, you know, with all of our designs, we were able to kind of just do everything we wanted to do. We wanted to um, shoot um, into the speaker. We wanted to uh, score through the amp and through the trap. So, and we also wanted to climb. So yeah, that's about it. Something I want to ask you uh, before we go back on here is, uh, I know some of this will be jumping in the CAD, but I really want to ask you about those bumper guards or the uh, the, the note guards yes. that you have on your robot. Uh, first off, like, um, 
have you tested these out yet? Is this something that has worked for you? Because uh, I'm curious to hear more about like the clearance on that. And because uh, this is something I haven't seen from other teams yet or really ever like in the history of FRC. Uh, so talk to me about uh, how did you come up with these and then what your testing has been like for them? Actually, uh, we got the idea from Open the Lines. We saw a couple of videos where uh, certain teams are testing these. Um, and, you know, it seemed like a really good idea because we didn't want to, you know, accidentally like run over a note and kind of like stall our intake, which is, you know, uh, like on the ground and in our frame. So, um, yeah, we just picked up the idea from other teams and we thought it'd be a good, um, you know, it, we thought it'd be a good thing to install. That's cool. And have you had a chance to actually test them uh, like on, on a field yet? Like, is it working for you overall? Uh, we have not officially been able to test these yet. Um, I think within the next week we'll be driving. Um, so we'll be able to test them then. Well, I look forward to seeing that. And, and actually, I haven't seen the other OA teams I've done that. So I'll definitely some research to do on my end for that uh, as well, too. So that's really neat. Um, let's hop into, uh, we've seen a lot of the, the robot itself, but let's hop into Onshape and what your current progress is uh, so far for there. So we'll bring that up on screen and uh, let's walk through some of the uh, different features and attributes of what your robot is in CAD so far. Yeah, so um, this is our Onshape model for our robot. This is like our full assembly. So there's a few differences between like the actual robot and the on-shape model. There's a few parts that aren't in there, and there's a lot of parts that aren't on the robot yet. But it, it gives a pretty good overview of what a lot of our plans are. So as I honestly showed earlier, um, we do have this under-the-bumper intake right here. Um, oh, I'll try and get a better look. So like the nodes is going to come in and get kicked up through that intake, and it's going to travel through this little snake path. Like uh, we showed, like we showed previously, except now you can act, you can kind of get a better look of it now that it's in 3D. Um, and then it will wrap around our shooter here. Whoops, that's not supposed to be there. Uh, <laughs> um, it'll wrap around this axle, which is going to have a um, a powered roller that rolls around it to help push the um, help push the note through. And then the note is going to sit in here. This is like our little shooter design right here. Um, these two axles, axles right here are going to have, um, compliant wheels on them. And then these are going to be, um, polycarbonate tubes. So they're going to be free spin. There's gonna be free spinning passive polycarbonate tubes. And then there's going to be like two sets of compliant wheels going across as an indexing mechanism to knock them into our flywheels here once they're up to speed. Um, yeah, and probably the largest part missing from the 3D model right now is, as you may remember, our kind of a slam dunk mechanism. Yeah. So we do have a set of passive rollers that's going to get attached to the front of the intake where those big orange wheels are right now, or sorry, front of the accelerator. Um, so the point is, is that when in a stowed position, um, it'll be out of the way, but uh, it is attached to surgical tubing so that when we want to make an amp shot, the arms can bend all the way backwards, and then we can just run into the amp the surgical tubing will move the plate to where we want it to be. And then all we have to do is fire our shooter just like it's a speaker shot and the notes will be redirected down into the amp. So. Yeah. So they will, they'll kind of wrap around these top flywheels here and then down almost backwards, except above the shooter instead of inside of it. Um, as Anjali showed you as well, uh, you know, you can pivot this thing up and down. Um, yeah. Um, and then we also have our climbers, which you know, I'll go over here because it's easier to see. Um, so our climbing mechanism is really interesting. Um, this hook needs to be changed, but the idea of it is you can bring the hook up and it'll come into contact with the chain and you can pull it down. And it's on both sides. And the actual way that the carriage is designed is that it'll end up sticking out underneath the robot a little bit just so we can get a bit more height out of our climb for that trap shot specifically. yeah yeah well, i'm assuming if you have those bumper lot. guards though that's gonna hopefully help mitigate anything with having that uh, climbing mechanism potentially in an area where it could snag or hit or something like that right yeah yes, absolutely especially yes. where the electrical is uh always around there yeah um yeah. One thing I want, I want to ask you on this, you mentioned uh, with your climber that, you, you know, you can climb from both sides. Are you able to score and trap from both sides then too? Or is that limited based on how your motion is that you can oh, only score on one uh, side with that? Um, 
there's only going to be one side for the hook. The hook design needs gotcha. to be changed. That was, yeah. They'll, we'll be climbing only from one side on that hook. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have hooks on both sides. Yeah, but the good news is, is yeah. that our intake is going to be opposite of where our, um, uh, our, speaker, our speaker shot is. But when we bend the arm back, our amp and trap shot are going to be on the same side as our intake. So what that means is, is that we can rotate um, like Jack is showing in the 3D model and we can pick up a note as we duck under the chain and then we can kind of move ourselves over it as we extend for that trap shot. So we pull ourselves up and then we move back down to score. Um, so that's something pretty neat about the idea that everything on our robot is static except that one main pivot on the uh, accelerator because that was how we were able to prioritize something as you know difficult to uh, easy to over engineer difficult to perfectly engineer as the trap um we were kind of able to find what we hope is an elegant solution to be able to achieve that and the speaker without sacrificing our cycle time so well explained as you went through it and something i've asked you though is that you are competing week one uh so what is the time frame to start getting these uh actually manufactured on the robot testing that sort of thing so most of our parts actually have already been manufactured and we're currently in the process of putting everything together. So um, the open alliance post that I made this morning um, where there's not much put together um, or last night is um, that's the state that we started in this morning. So we've already put together quite a lot of the robot and our current deadline goal is end of the day tomorrow, but we we're going to try and aim for that. But if we don't meet that deadline, we always have Thursday. Yeah. So for the greater Pittsburgh regional, our week one regional, um, once everything is all assembled, our plan is to um, primarily score to the speaker by uh, going up to the subwoofer. Um, we're planning also maybe on having a podium shot, but we think sacrificing that extra quarter of a second with our Krakens that it'll take to get from the podium to the subwoofer is worth it to have that 100% accurate shot. And then we're also going to the Buckeye regional, which I believe is a week five, um, week four. So in between those two regionals, our coders are going to try to get us a shoot from anywhere functionality so that no matter how far away we are from the speaker, we'll be able to make that shot within the wing. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk about where your programming progress is uh, for your team so far. Uh, so we talked about what's going to happen between week one and week four, but let's talk about where you are now and maybe where you want to be by week one for that event. So a big thing that we did coming into the season was uh, adopt Advantage Kit's I.O. system. And what this allows us to do is basically we can um, implement simulation and uh, stuff like that a lot more smoothly. Um, basically, the principle behind Advantage Kit's I.O. system is you separate all of your hardware calls. So, for example, if you're directly spinning a voltage, um, spinning a motor at a given voltage, that is a direct I.O. call. So you separate that into its own file and we have all of that stored in its own um, hardware input hardware implementation, right? And what this allows us to do is create several different kinds of hardware implementations. Um, some of these can be simulated ones. Um, so what this allowed us to do is simulate a majority of our robots code, um, as I, I'm about to show you in a second. But um, by simulating, we are able to pick up the slack uh, of the mechanical team, and we, we can get the code <laughs> done before the robot is actually done. So, um, Making friends, I see. So, yeah. Yeah, they're too good for their own right. Uh, this this uh, screenshot right here is just an image of our uh, code from last year that we changed over the summer to adopt this I.O. layer uh, kind of uh, design process. And what we did is you can see we have our own hardware implementations um, and we have our actual subsystems, which are represented by these files. Um, so an example of our code actually working in simulation this is using um, 6328's, oh, sorry. This is using 6328's Advantage Scope um, logging visualizer. Um, and everything here is completely simulated. So our drivetrain is completely simulated. This arm is represented by a mechanism 2D object. So it's just a simple uh, 2D rectangle that pivots around. And what we were able to do is get our robot to not only automatically track uh, the speaker using the swerve drive, but also to automatically track the angle of the arm to properly shoot at the speaker. Um, so basically at this point, all of our arm code is done and we only have to write a little more um, 
intake code and stuff like that. So once the robot's actually complete, we're foreseeing only a couple hours of, of getting um, electric, like the motor IDs wired up and stuff like that, um, just sorting out only hardware stuff. And then everything else is already pre-coded and ready to go. Well, I'm glad to hear how you're picking up for the uh, slack of the mechanical team, uh, as you see out there. But, uh, you know, as, as we follow, you know, your team's progress, I think about you from, from last year and the year before, and just it's incredible to see how far flying circuits have come in the, over the last couple of years. So uh, first off, kudos to you on, on that progress so far. It's been great to see your OA blogs and your updates for that as well, too. But week one's coming up soon, so we wish you best of luck as it comes up. Make sure you check them out, the Greater Pittsburgh Regional and the Buckeye Regional later on. And, of course, keep following them on their OA blog. Thanks a lot for uh, taking out the time to show us more about your team and your robot, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you for, Thank having, you for us. having us. Yeah. The FRC Premiere Night is back for Crescendo on Saturday, February 24th. Submit up to a two-minute video showcasing your robot in celebration of this build season. Submissions are due by Thursday, February 22nd. Submit your reveal video and get submission requirements at firstupdatesnow.com slash premiere24. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.